Nobody likes a cheater, so stop cheating yourself. Welcome to The Hopefulist, a daily talk show hosted by veteran broadcaster Wendy McClure. Join Wendy each day as she shares her life lessons that transformed her from perpetual pessimist to the ultimate hopefulist. The perfect morning show to get you caught up on the day's top stories while sharing insights that will lead to positive transformation and bring out the hopefulist in you. For more inspiration, visit hopefulist.com. And now, here's your host and hopefulist, Wendy McClure. Hello, and thank you for joining me today on The Hopefulist. It's your daily dose of inspiration and positivity. Today's quote of the day comes from Emily Bronte. Every leaf speaks bliss to me, fluttering from the autumn tree. It's time to shed our leaves. It's time to get rid of the old and prepare for the new. Change is not always bad. Change can sometimes be very good. I just saw something recently. I think I uh, saved it as a picture about the, the trees are ready to shed their leaves and yet they are not afraid at all. I thought that was very good. I was taking a quick glance at my pictures to see if I have that actual direct quote, but it does not appear that I saved it. Boo me, boo. But it, that was the gist of it was basically um, The trees are still standing tall as they're ready to shed their leaves and are not afraid in the least because they have faith in the fact that they will be back come springtime. I do love fall. It's a wonderful time of year. I had the chance to meet up with some of my girls in the neighborhood last night at the Bay Beach. We sat around, we chatted, we watched the sunset and the moon rise over the beach. It is a direct full moon tonight. Explain some of the higher tides that we've been having here in the hood. It was a beautiful sight. Where we sit on the Bay Beach has a direct view of the bridge to LBI. And the moon literally came up over the bridge. And at one point looked like it was sitting on the bridge. Now, the picture that I posted today is a picture of that. It is difficult to see the moon in that picture unless you are looking for it. So look closely over the bridge and you will see the moon just sitting on top of it. It's a pretty cool picture. Wish I would have taken my real camera. I've gotten this real camera and I haven't really messed with it since I came back from Colorado. I haven't even transferred those pictures. Yeah, again, my uh, not know-how at working things is standing in my way. I'm letting it stop me. But I know that the next time I go to a beachy area, I will definitely be playing with it and figuring it out as I want to get some really, really cool night shots. And I probably should mess with it today, too, because like I said, it's going to be a full moon tonight. And uh, not only is it full, but it seems very close Big moon last night. Very big. And then I saw it this morning. Walked out the house about 4.15 like usual. Bam! There it is. Right out my front door. Well, hello, moon. (laughs) Yes. I did say hello, moon. In my head. The topic for today, we're talking about apples. You know, it's fall. Hello, fall. Caramel or candied apple? That is what I wanted to hear from you. Now, I don't recall having many caramel apples as a kid. I always remember the red candied apple. You know, the really hard, crunchy stuff that, you know, your teeth would fall out while you were eating it. But, oh, so worth it. I don't really see them much anymore. I think that I would prefer them over a caramel apple. Now... That being said, my sister-in-law, and I don't know 
I don't know the name of it. Harry and David. I don't know. Something fancy. She has gotten us for Christmas a couple of years. And it's a caramel apple. And it's got all kinds of little accoutrements on it. Like um, candy, tiny little peanut butter chips, hard candies. Oh, they're to die for. They are just to die for. I'm going to have to look into those again. Carolyn says chocolate. I did not know that there was a version of apple covered in chocolate. I have never seen that. I have never seen a chocolate covered apple. I I guess they exist. Connie says I used to get the candy, the red candy apple on the boardwalk. Eleanor says caramel candy was always too hard in the teeth. Yes, it was hard in the teeth, but oh, so worth it if you got to keep them. E says I would love to find a plain good old candy apple like the ones I used to get as a kid when the red candy cracked when you bet, bit into it. Yes, that's exactly what I'm talking about. So I said to Eve, is that, that's what I mean. Do they not sell them any, anymore? And Eve said, I can only find them commercially produced, covered with peanuts. Would love to know who might still hand dip candy apples. I never did it on myself. Never did it on myself. Joanne says caramel. Marcy says caramel. If I have to choose, uh, Nancy says both. Joanne says caramel, but it has to be Granny Smith. Granny Smith apple all the way. Lauren says neither, just a plain old apple. I said, okay, well, that's not fun at all. And she responded, if you want to cover an apple in dark chocolate, that's a game changer. Maybe they do it. Martin says caramel with m and stuck all over them. Mrs. Printables are very good. Yeah, that's the, uh, we had uh, Denise also mention she likes caramel, but Mrs. Printable apples are uh, the bomb. Michelle says I haven't had either in years, but I'd go with caramel. Looks like caramel has definitely edged out candied. You, know, you people are wrong. Just saying. Candied so much better than caramel. No, they're both good. They're both good, but I, I definitely would prefer especially since I haven't had one in so long. Do they still do all the fall type things that we used to do as a kid? I know they have pumpkin picking, which really isn't pumpkin picking. Let's be honest, people. They just take a bunch of pumpkins and put them in a field. They're not growing there. You're not picking a pumpkin. You're picking it up, but you're not picking it. I mean, come on. But remember we used to bob for apples and... Yeah, I don't remember the last time I saw anybody bob for apples. Man, that was hard. How hard was it to bob for apples? I used to, and I guess maybe it was considered cheating, I would try to get the stem on top. And then I think I would be told, nope, that's not the way you do it. You have to get your, you know, you have to get your teeth into it. You have to crunch that thing, and then it would always slip right out, slip right out, slip right out. Kind of like the other night when I was... um. I was eating a tomato mozzarella salad that I had prepared, and it was with the little grape and cherry tomatoes. And have you ever tried to spear a grape or cherry tomato? It's mostly the cherry tomatoes because they're round like an apple. That's not in a bowl. That has nothing else to go hold up against. Just try and spear it without it rolling all over the plate. It's very difficult. Very difficult. I know. First world problems, people. First world problems. So today's blog post, we're talking about um, cheating yourself. Yeah, don't do it. Give it your all. Otherwise, you are only cheating yourself. So often we do things half-heartedly. We convince ourselves that it is better than nothing. It's better to do something than to not even try. This is true, but, but, if you are going to do something, do it right. If you don't give it your all, you will not see the benefits and results you are ultimately searching for. A couple of years ago, I was on the Weight Watchers program, which assigned points to the food you ate, and you only got a certain number of points per day. It wasn't a ton. I think I got 26 points a day. One day at work, I was desperately searching for how many points a Cadbury cream egg would be. Uh, I found a number of results that said it would be five points, but I did see one that claimed it was only four points. A guy I worked with said, there you go, only four points. 
seemed pretty clear to me that it was really five points. And if I counted it as four, then I would be the one going a point over every time I ate one. And I told him, you know, I'm only going to be cheating myself if I counted as four points. Yes, I could have gone the route that would have given me more of that creamy goodness. But I would know why the number on the scale didn't move either. The thing that is most concerning is people encourage you, like my coworker, to cheat yourself. I don't think they mean any harm, but it's not the type of encouragement you need when you are doing hard things, like not eating the Cadbury cream egg. It's the same when you're working out. Give it your all. Don't short yourself. If you do, it will take that much longer to see results. I know working out can be hard. I know how difficult those last couple of reps can be. But it's supposed to be hard. If you aren't challenging yourself, you aren't making progress. Yes, it is better than not working out at all. But as long as you are in the midst of the sweat, go all the way. Make it work for you. There are times that I want to skip a set. There are times that I want to take just a few minutes off my cardio to give myself a break. Here's a warning for you. Listen closely. Once you start doing this, it becomes easier and easier to shorten your workout. Yes, it's like one of those things that once you start, it's hard to stop. Well, I stopped a little early yesterday, so I can stop a little early again today. Instead of shorting yourself, why don't you try doing one more than you were supposed to? Just one more squat, one more curl, lunge, arm raise, or one more minute of cardio. How awesome will you feel about yourself for doing one more instead of skipping a couple at the end? The first time I tried to keep a gratitude journal, I didn't take it seriously. I would try to remember to do it at night, but my heart wasn't in it. I may have remembered I still had to do it while washing the dishes. I would moan to myself that I still had to get that pesky gratitude journal filled out. Then I would write things like, I'm grateful the dishes are done. (laughs) I killed myself. So I didn't really put any thought into it. More importantly, I didn't put any feeling into it. Once I started doing it properly, changed my life forever. Changed my life forever. Once I actually sat down and truly thought about what it was I was grateful for that day, I realized it brought me joy just to write it down. Then, and this is the whole point of a gratitude journal, it set me up to start looking for more things to be grateful for throughout the day. Just the other day, I was was heading to Walmart, exciting stuff, going to Walmart, getting soap and deodorant, and I was sitting at the light, waiting to turn onto the main roadway. It was a nice day. Had the window down. There was a tree next to me. Leaves just starting to change color. I'm looking at the tree, and I notice there had to be a hundred birds in there chirping away. Yeah, I'm not a good bird interpreter, uh, interpreter, obviously, or imitator. But there was so many birds, you could just hear them. And I was like, you know what? This is a good moment. I'm going to write this in my gratitude journal later today. And I did. So give it your all. Or sometimes, in this case, it's not worth doing at all. The next time you think about shorting yourself on something, remember, you are only cheating yourself. No one likes to be cheated on, so why would you do it so willingly to yourself? Don't. Stop. Break the cycle. Be true to your word and true to yourself. You are the only person you can truly count on to not let yourself down. So don't. In any aspect of your life. Go throughout the day today and notice what you are doing half-heartedly. Can you just try to give it your all? 
I am pretty sure you are going to feel better about yourself and you will likely see better results as well. Now go on out there and be the badass I know you are. I'm cheering you on. Thank you for listening to The Hopeless, hosted by Wendy McClure. For more inspiration, please visit hopefulist.com. Thanks, and we'll see you tomorrow on The Hopefulist. Once a cheater, always a cheater. Does anybody remember what that's from? <laughs>